In a shocking incident, a three-year-old boy was killed by a pack of street dogs. In Sambe Palli Mandalal, only where where Gramallo, Pichi Kukka, Swai Raviharan Jaisundi, Nirla Padu, Rajiv Grahakalpa Colony, lo Vishadan Sort Jaisundi. We know the set of panic amongst people in Kerala across the state. Packs of dogs have been spreading terror. Ten cases have been reported in the last four days, including a woman being killed, and it has finally forced the state government to take a serious view of the problem. I had a viewer comment on one of my videos recently and they were explaining how street dogs are a huge problem where they live uh, in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, they explained how most of these street dogs are fixed, so spayed or neutered, but people let these dogs roam free everywhere in the city. Uh, and this is mainly because of the dog lovers. If you say you don't want to live with stray dogs, they will say, oh my God, what a terrible human being. This world doesn't belong to you. They have rights to live too. Chain yourself in your home, blah, blah, blah. They write that it is a huge problem because firstly, they pollute. They're pooping all over the streets. Uh, this person has to watch where they step when they're walking to school. Uh, the poops stay there for days. Sometimes they're clean. But as I discussed in my videos, uh, you know, dogs, they pass parasitic eggs in their stool, which can survive in the environment for weeks or months, even after the poop is cleaned up. These parasitic eggs, which are invisible to the naked eye, can and do go on to infect human beings, as I discussed in this video about worms that I uploaded a while back. Uh, these parasitic infections can be devastating. They can result in blindness and other very, very serious health problems. And then there is leptospirosis, which is an infection uh, that is caused by a bacteria that can be spread to us via the urine of dogs, uh, as well as rodents and other animals. This bacteria can cause damage to the liver, kidneys, lungs, and brain. You do not want to get this disease. It can lead to a variety of complications, including muscle weakness, paralysis, abnormal heart rhythms, among others. This person writes that people should not have to deal with such a disgusting thing, uh, and that it is awful to let these inbred creatures roam freely, urinating and pooping all around within human boundaries. We do not allow human beings to do this, so why do we tolerate it from dogs? It makes absolutely no sense. Uh, second, these dogs are barking and howling all night in neighborhoods. My viewer writes, even though some of them are fixed, they chase people around and attack them sometimes. They are everywhere, streets, bus stops, grocery stores, garages, not to mention some people are scared of dogs. Dogs are mostly massive, big. People can have allergies too. And lastly, they jump in front of cars and cause many car accidents, causing people to get hurt too. Now, I'm going to be making a video about this soon. How many of you have seen these videos on YouTube of dogs chasing people on motorcycles? There are so many videos like this, and it is so common. I've had viewers comment and write to me and tell me about family and friends that were involved in motor vehicle accidents that were caused by dogs. Either they were distracted by a dog on the road or they swerved to avoid the dog. It is a big, big problem. My viewer writes, when a dog jumps into the street and a car hits it by accident, people blame the driver to death because he or she should have been more careful to not hit the dog. This is our city, our living space, not the stray dogs. We didn't build here for dogs. Those mutts are harassing our boundaries constantly and awfully. We can't say something because the dog lovers think dogs deserve to live in our public places freely. And lastly writes, 
that there are about 130,000 stray dogs or even more just in Istanbul city. And the number keeps rising because it is illegal to put them down. It's all because the government only listens to dog lovers. Well, I want to say that this idea that dogs have a right to live in our cities is ludicrous. What have they done to deserve living in our cities? Have they constructed any roads? Have they built any buildings? Do they maintain the sewer system? Do they grow food to feed to the residents? Do they operate the hospitals? They do nothing to contribute to human society. So what do they, how do they deserve to live in our public places? They don't deserve it at all. And these dog worshippers will say, well, what about homeless people? They don't contribute anything to society, so what right do they have to live in our cities? First of all, human beings are homeless for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's because they have problems with addiction or their mental health. In a lot of cases, these people can be helped. They can get back up on their feet and become contributing members of society. Secondly, human beings are very different from dogs. Dogs are not human. The pet industry wants to convince everyone that they are somehow on the same level as human children, that they are our fur babies and family members and so forth. This is nonsense. Dogs are animals. They are disgusting, dirty, scavenging, disease-ridden animals, no different from rats. Where are all the spay, neuter vaccination programs for rats. Where's everyone's compassion for rats? It makes absolutely no sense. Yes, human beings create noise pollution. Sometimes humans harass and kill other humans. We commit crimes. We do horrible things to one another. But human beings are social animals, which means we need one another to survive. We cannot get rid of humans. We can't exterminate humans because we would die without each other. Also, human beings do shitty things. Yes, that's true. But you know the expression, hurt people, hurt people. When a human attacks or kills another person, it's because they have been damaged. They've suffered some sort of trauma. They're not healthy in their heads. So dogs, by contrast are naturally sociopathic. Only a very tiny percentage of human beings are sociopaths. But dogs are natural sociopaths in that they lack the capacity to feel guilt or remorse. They can't discern right from wrong. They have no sense of morality, unlike humans. So you can't compare the two. Dogs are instinct-driven. All they do is harass people pollute the environment with their barking and their shit and their piss. It's ridiculous to think that they deserve to live in our public places freely. People are so crazy, hypocritical. These are the same people who have no problem whatsoever funding the torture and death of 56 billion land animals every year. Sorry, it used to be 56 billion, but I just learned that the number is actually 72 billion land animals per year. 72 billion land animals per year. That's not even counting fish, which also are sensitive, very sensitive. They possess a degree of intelligence that most people underestimate. Right? They go on about how, oh, these dogs are... You know, they're living beings and we should show them compassion. Yeah, where's your compassion for all of the animals that are stuck on those kebabs or whatever these Turkish people are eating, right? Those are sentient animals, sensitive animals, intelligent animals that suffer. Why don't they care about those? Because they are hypocrites. This whole thing is absolutely crazy. Just listen to this idiotic nonsense. Changing landscapes. But there is nothing more Istanbul than its permanent residents. No, not the people, the dogs. Estimates vary wildly from 30 to 150,000 dogs that patrol or more accurately laze about on the streets of Istanbul. 
They play this happy, lighthearted music as soon as they start talking about dogs. As if dogs are just so full of joy and we all love them. No, we're talking about something very serious here. Animals that kill 60,000 every year with rabies. We're going to get to that shortly. Animals need protection. That's why I developed this hobby to feed and take care of them. We love the street dogs because they are living creatures like us and they need our help. That's why we like them. Street animals are part of the society. The world doesn't belong to humans. We have to learn to live together with animals. Over the years, there have been a number of efforts to try and control the number of dogs, some more successful than others. This organization, the one that runs this forest shelter just outside the main city of Istanbul, was the first in Turkey to implement a neuter and release policy. They'd pick up dogs off the streets in the city centers, bring them here, get them neutered and vaccinated before being released back. Now, there are some thousand dogs here in the shelter, and as you can imagine, there's a cost to keeping them. We spend about 20, 25,000 uh, Turkish lira per month uh, for running this shelter, including medicine, dry food, and uh, we have to keep some employees who has to work every day. We have been living with stray animals uh, for so many hundreds of years, so people are uh, kind of... Uh, accustomed to dogs in the streets and they really take care of them. Let us live with animals that are vaccinated, that are uh, neutered, who will accompany us in our lives in the neighborhood. This is absolute madness. And this problem is not unique to Istanbul. It is a worldwide problem. You know, these dog worshippers are going around spreading their gospel like missionaries convincing people that these disgusting, filthy creatures deserve our compassion. It, it is so infuriating because think of all the money they are spending helping these overgrown rodents when all of that food and medicine could be spent on human beings. It makes me livid. And... Like I said, it's not just in Istanbul. It is a huge problem in all of Asia, Africa, Central and South America. Check out this article. This is an American who went to Chile and he writes about his experience, how going to South America really opened his eyes and he realized that he was really sheltered. As an American, his realm of experience hid him from the true depths of his good fortune. He came face to face with this realization when he realized that there is no money for animal control in South America, in Chile. And the feral dog problem is of immense scope worldwide. We have a lot of privileges in North America, and most of my viewers are in North America, Western Europe also, Australia, New Zealand. We are very privileged. We don't see stray dogs like these people do in Asia, South America, and Central America. Mexico, it's another country with a huge street dog problem. Mexicans love their dogs, a fact that's clear to see across the capital. But away from the parks and pet stores, dogs are also a major problem for the country. Official estimates show Mexico has the highest number of stray dogs in all of Latin America, with more than 15 million countrywide. Such animals represent a public health risk, and several cases of canine attacks have made headlines in Mexico over the past two years. As well as aggression, stray dogs put public health at risk through their feces, which, when dried, is added to the atmosphere. Rabies is also an issue in Mexico. Rabies victims suffer horrifying symptoms and eventually die. Most pathetically, they know that the disease has no cure and they will die soon. The rabies victim dies a solitary death in isolation hospital ward, away from relatives, dear and near ones. The victim's hands are invariably tied to the cot by bandage or ropes. They are unable to drink even sips of water, undergo great pain and mental agony, and in most cases with full awareness. Prodromal phase. Later, low-grade fever, 
headache and body ache are reported. Clinically, subsequently, patient develops painful spasm of the muscles that control breathing and swallowing, resulting in drooling of saliva and person cannot swallow and voice may get hoarse. The pupils may get dilated. Tears and perspiration increases. Blood pressure becomes low. Patient develops hydrophobia, fear of water. Photophobia, fear of light. Aerophobia, fear of breeze. Later, as the disease progresses, patient gets agitated, combative and destructive. Shows mental confusion, becomes sensitive to touch, noise and light. Gets extremely thirsty but unable to drink because of painful spasms in the throat. Develops dehydration, loss of muscle tone and listlessness is seen in majority and eventually death occurs in 3 to 5 days due to respiratory paralysis or cardiac arrest. <laughs> Yet the number of stray dogs on Mexico's streets continues to rise. Solutions aren't easy to come by. But those working here say all of Mexico needs to embrace what they've known all along. The dogs are truly deserving to be man's best friend. They deserve to be called man's best friend. Why exactly? What did they do to deserve that title? Stand around and let people pet them? Uh, turn the corners of their mouths upward while they stick their goofy tongues out to regulate their body temperature, giving the appearance of a smile? Uh, is it because they demonstrate juvenile wolf behaviors and act excited when you come home because they're anticipating a meal? Is it because they lick you, uh, trying to induce vomiting so that they can eat your vomit? I mean, is that why they deserve to be called man's best friend? So what you are seeing in Mexico, as well as other countries worldwide, are dog worshippers who say dogs deserve our compassion, it is inhumane to cull them, uh, we shouldn't kill them, instead we should spay, neuter, uh, vaccinate and release them. Now these dog worshippers are not right in the head, they are brainwashed by the pet industry propaganda that is shoved down our throats here in the West. That or they suffer from an as yet unidentified brain parasite which prevents them from thinking rationally. But these people insist that culling dogs only makes the problem worse. In what universe does that apply to anything else? I mean, do you say to someone who has a rat infestation or a mouse infestation, well, don't kill the mice. It will only make the problem worse. Oh, don't kill the cockroaches. You'll just get more cockroaches. This is absolutely stupid. It's crazy. Of course, killing dogs is going to reduce the number of dogs. This is a no-brainer. Okay, dogs might come in to replace those that are dead, but then you kill those too, and you just keep killing. They accuse the government of executing a failed operation. A massive failure because they conducted the cull over two days. You make this a daily thing. I promise you, there are residents in great numbers who will be happy to go out with clubs or guns, armed with whatever, poisons, you name, I don't care. Uh, and you kill the dogs on a daily basis. You don't just do it once or twice a year. You make it a daily thing. You eradicate them in the same way we get rid of other vermin. It's so stupid that I would laugh if it wasn't so serious. Look at this video of dogs destroying a car. We don't need this in our lives. This is completely unnecessary. You can eliminate this problem easily by having people out there armed, killing these animals. Now, I don't derive enjoyment out of killing animals or seeing animals be killed. 
But what makes me really angry is that people are not doing anything. And they're allowing this to continue. They talk about implementing these spay, neuter, release programs, vaccinating the dogs and so forth. And so the government says, all right, they listen to these dog nuts. They change the laws. They make it illegal to kill dogs. But then those programs, which they're, you know, they've promised to put into action, are not being put into action because they're very expensive. It costs a lot of money to do what they are proposing. And uh, the government doesn't have money. Or in a lot of cases, these governments are corrupt. And, you know, these organizations that accept donations are often corrupt. You don't know where the money is going. Uh, that's the case with many charities. I would venture to say most charities, the money isn't going where you think it's going to go. Uh, and so these people who are running these programs are lining their pockets. And they're not executing the plan. And the dogs are continuing to wreak havoc and attack people and spread disease, and it's just a huge mess. And so I had to make a video about this because the problem is not getting solved this way. By listening to these dog worshippers, things are not getting done. The problem is only getting worse. And it looks like religion could be playing a part in this as well because here someone's saying that Buddha doesn't like killing. How many people believe this and use this as an excuse for dogs to continue killing people? And a lot of these locals take to beating them to death with clubs, poisoning them, and so forth. But there's this growing movement of dog worshippers spreading their message, like I said, brainwashing people with their propaganda into believing these dogs deserve compassion and deserve to live. And this is causing major problems worldwide. <laughs> It is eight o'clock at night, and this is the main shopping street in Leh. Leh is the capital of a Himalayan region in the north of India. Now, normally you would expect a street like this to be fairly busy. Now, it is winter, but there's another reason why this place is so quiet, and that is that lots of people here in Leh are simply too frightened to come out. And that is because Leh has a really serious problem with stray dogs. At least 180 people were bitten by dogs last year. One man was mauled to death. Now I want to get an idea of the scale of the problem. So we're out here looking to see how many dogs we can find. And just to be on the safe side, I've brought a stick. There's obviously some dogs down here. It's going to estimated to be 30 million stray dogs in India. Huge numbers of people are bitten. One estimate is that as many as 15 million people could be bitten each year. And an indicator of just how serious that is are the World Health Organization statistics on rabies. 20,000 people a year die of rabies here in India. That is a third of the world total. Here, here. There's a ton up here. Every day you go to the city, you hear this. You just hear dogs barking. They're all over the place. That's a problem across India, and it's really, really difficult to solve. One of the reasons why is because there is a law against killing feral dogs. Now, there have been attempts at, uh, at vaccinating them and sterilizing them, but it simply hasn't been working. And until a solution can be found, the streets of Indian cities will continue to be very dangerous. Uh, I know it's a problem in Eastern Europe as well. We are sheltered from the realities of what these people face every day. We view dogs as pets, as family members. So we think that all these dogs around the world should be treated with the same compassion we extend to human beings. 
The people living in these places don't view dogs the same way North Americans or Western Europeans do. They view them with indifference or as vermin. People who live in the West, in first world countries, do not see the problem in a realistic light. They are not living in reality. I have had people comment on my videos, very selfish, short-sighted, disgusting people saying things like, well, what do you care? Are you going to Africa? Are you going to India? What do you care? These people are so selfish and gross. They only care about themselves, about their own country. Well, my compassion extends worldwide. And as a mother, I care about other mothers and their children. I don't care where they live. It breaks my heart to know about all of this suffering. Uh, and if you don't care about this human suffering, you're an awful, awful person. People who defend dogs and advocate for spay, neuter, release programs deserve our scorn. They should be shamed. They are disgusting, anti-human wastes of space. They are an embarrassment to humanity. Because of the expense and because of government corruption, it is obvious that those programs are not working. They don't work. They will never work. Culling is the only answer. And not just a two-day cull per year. I am talking about daily culling. If you go to this website, and Rabies Now, they talk about the challenge, the solution. They say here, Rabies elimination plans must include human and animal government agencies, veterinary and human health professionals, educators, scientists, community groups, yada, yada, yada. Money, money, money. What can you do to help pledge and rabies now give us your money they just want money it's just another money making scheme how much of your money what percentage of your dollars are going to actually go towards spaying and neutering those dogs who can say probably a small percentage it's a racket give these residents clubs maces sticks and the green light to do what they know is right to do what they want to do these dog worshippers are sick. They suffer from a mental illness, and it's time we stand up and call it what it is. These people are anti-human. We need to call out their insanity. We need to stop them in their tracks. We need to see dogs for what they are. We need to educate. You'll find videos on YouTube of people in the West who are outraged when they see footage of people killing these dogs. What makes me outraged is this footage. of stray dog menace have been on the rise in uh, uh, the CCTV footage that surfaced recently a pack of dogs was seen attacking a woman in MS Ramaya Nagar area of the city it can be clearly seen that the woman who was walking down the street was suddenly attacked by 10 to 12 dogs there has been an increase in such incidents in this area over the last couple of days Residents of Moto village in Kurisoi North are living in fear after constant attacks by stray dogs which are roaming the village. There is an incident was last evening where a mother and her son were attacked by the roadside in the village. One of the victims, Beatrice Wanja, narrated how she heard her son screaming and rushed from the house to rescue him from one of the dogs only to be attacked by the same dog. Angry residents have been killing the dogs but now are worried about the safety of the livestock and school going children who walk the same paths to the dogs are said to be roaming. Most of the victims are unable to raise the high amounts of money to get anti-rabies vaccines after the dog bites, that is anti-rabies vaccines.
Another morning in Tinganga village in Kembo County, waking up to what has almost become routine. Savage dogs on the loose in the dead of the night have for the last three days been attacking and mauling the ship in this village. And this morning was no different. The swans bring the number of sheep mauled and left for dead to 50. John Mwashaga, only the latest victim, having lost six of his sheep in one night. Some of them.